Biology is the study of life, and so our first unit of study will be about exploring life. Uh, the chapter covered in the textbook is chapter one, so be sure and look through chapter one, read the pages that are assigned to you to read. There are a lot of words in biology. Biology is a very highly vocabulary intensive course. Throughout the course of the year, you will learn lots and lots of new words. In fact, it's been said that a year in biology, you learn as many new words as you do in a year of a foreign language, and that's probably true. We will try to focus on vocabulary as we go along, and I'm going to do my very best to give you a vocabulary list to focus on for each unit of study. And so even though the words that you see here in the graphic are words that are included in this unit of study, a lot of them you already know, okay, the ones that we're focusing on as vocabulary words are these ones here. So this is your vocabulary list for this unit. Um, make sure that you can de define and use these words and understand how they are used. Um, when they're introduced in the notes, they will be in italics so that you can see and make note of that as you go through the unit. So we're starting to off talking about living things, and one of the things that we have to talk about with living things is how we know whether something is living. There are certain characteristics that all living things have in common. Depending on the book that you look at, you will see anywhere from six to eight or 10 properties and processes or characteristics of living things. Your book lists seven, and I think they're pretty well de delineated. So we're gonna talk about these seven properties and processes or characteristics of living things. First of all is an ordered structure. All living things are made of cells. Some living things are only made of one cell. Others are made of dozens or hundreds or thousands or millions. You have trillions of cells in your body. So if you have trillions of cells, think how many a sperm whale must have. They are huge. So all living things are made of cells. Not all the cells are identical. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of cells. We'll talk a lot about cells this year. In fact, a lot of our study this fall will be centered around cells and processes of cells. So be ready to learn about cells. Secondly, all living things reproduce. Not only do they reproduce, they reproduce the same kind of organism that they are. Um, there are a couple of variations on this, like when you cross two different species and come up with a hybrid species like a mule or something like that, but that's not, generally speaking, um, going to happen when members of a population which are in the same species reproduce together. They're going to reproduce their own kind. Again, if it's a single-celled organism, they'll produce single cells similar to themselves. Multicellular organisms produce the same type of organism that they are, the same species. Third, we have growth and development. <clears throat> All living things grow and develop. Whether they're a single cell or multiple cells, they're going to grow at some point. When you grow to a certain size as a single cell, you have to divide. And that's it. If you're a multicellular organism, the more cell divisions you have, the larger you end up getting. Some of the cells will not live. Others will be replaced and so forth. And not only that, even though you started out as a single fertilized egg cell and the first cells that divided were all the same kind of cells, you know now that you're made of a lot of different kinds of cells. And all of those patterns of growth and development are controlled by the DNA found in the nucleus of your cells. And that holds true for all living things. The pattern of growth and development is controlled by the DNA. Next, we have energy processing. That there is chemical energy that is stored in food, and it's what gives your cells and your organs the energy um, to power the activities and chemical reactions that go on within your body. And that's the same whether you're made of trillions of cells like you are or whether you're a single cell. There has to be chemical energy that is stored and used by the organism for its various activities. Um, this can take a lot of different formats in a lot of different ways, and we will spend some time talking about how this energy is stored and how it is processed and released. Next, we have response. When we're talking about response, not in, like in a response to a question, but response to environmental stimuli, whether it is a plant turning toward the sun, whether it is um, 
a Venus flytrap trapping an insect, there is some kind of response to the environment, to some kind of response to stimuli from the environment. Um, and that can, be, that can be as simple as moving another direction. Sometimes it involves a color change. Sometimes it involves um, the development of various chemicals within the organism. Lots of different kinds of responses. But all living things do respond to their environment. It doesn't always involve movement. Please be aware that not all th living things move very well. But there are responses that you can detect. Next we have regulation. There are lots of different kinds of regulatory mechanisms within the organism to maintain a stable internal environment. This is called maintaining homeostasis. You'll hear this term over and over again this year. Uh, this is a very, very important term and a very important concept in biology. Most of the activities of living things are involved in maintaining homeostasis, whether it is moving out of the sun when it's too bright or too hot, whether it is um, some kind of chemical reaction that occurs, most of those reactions are involving, most of those things that occur are involving maintaining that stable internal environment within the cell and within the organism. And this is regulated by various kinds of feedback mechanisms. Well, again, we will spend some time later this year talking about how those mechanisms work and how they, how they uh, are able to maintain homeostasis within the organism. Next we have evolutionary adaptation. This is one of the core themes of biology, talking about evolution or change over time. What it means is that individuals within a species who have adaptations or traits <clears throat> that are advantageous to them in surviving their environment, they're going to have greater reproductive success and they're going to pass on those traits to their offspring. Over time, the accumulation of these advantageous traits will, can lead to the development of new species or the change within a species. But living things do change over time, and this is because of evolutionary adaptations. <clears throat> this is a list of these seven properties with their definitions. I'll leave you with this. And the next set of notes will go into more topics about how we're going to go about studying life.